Hi, I'm Chris from SQL for Automation. Today I'm going to show you how you can connect a Mitsubishi PLC to an SQL database using SQL for Automation. We've just recently developed a new library for it and you can download it for free from our website. So in this video we're going to first download and install SQL for Automation and the library. Then we're going to set up the PLC and the program, set up the connections, test everything and finally take a closer look at the library. To download SQL for Automation and the library, we can go to our website, sqlforautomation.com, and click the download button. And then in here we can select a Mitsubishi controller, fill out this short form, accept the terms, and click this button down here. And this way we will receive the download link via email, from where we can copy the link, paste it into our browser, click OK, and it should download the files. And then from there we can extract them and we should have a few documents, the installation file and the library. So let's start with the installation. To do it we just extract this folder and then go inside, execute the installer which suits our operating system, after which we just go through all the steps and then wait until it's finished and that's it. So now let's take a look at our library. If we extract the SQL for GX Works folder, we will get two files, the user library and an example project. I'm just gonna go ahead and open the project and inside you will find an example program which is already parameterized and shows you how we can use the library. For this I've included five different examples with different SQL requests. But before we get into any details, let's just get it running. First we're gonna directly connect our computer and our PLC with an ethernet cable. Now I'm using the R04 CPU and by default it has this IP. So now our computer IP needs to be in the same range. To do this we open the Ethernet settings, change adapter options, right click our adapter, properties, IP4 and again properties and change this IP here. The first three numbers need to be the same as in the PLC and the last number can be anything between 0 and 255. So I'm going to set it to 40 and we can close this down. Next we're going to go to convert and rebuild all. And then next I want to upload the program, but because my PLC is running right now, I'll have to reset it first. I can do this by going to my PLC, opening up this cover here and holding the switch to the left until it clicks. And then if I want to start it again, I can pull the switch to the right but for my next step I'm gonna leave it in the middle. I want to initialize the CPU in memory to have a clean PLC. This may not be necessary though and you also have to note that this will delete most of the data on your PLC. So only do this if you don't need that data. After that's done I can select all and upload the program to the PLC. Alright and then we can go online And it works. So now let me just restart the PLC real quick. I can do that by pulling the switch to the right. And it should start running again. So I want to connect my PLC to a Microsoft Access database. And to do that I'm gonna first install the Access Runtime, which you can download for free on the internet. I'll also put the link in the description. And after that's done I can open the SQL for Automation config tool, connect it to my connector service, click on new to create a new link, where I enter a name, select the standard target type, the connector IP, after that I can select the port which isn't being used yet, and select my data source. But of course we don't have one yet. So let's create one. Go to ODBC admin, systemdsn add, Select the Microsoft Access driver, then enter a data source name and select my database. I'll put a link to it in the description. After that we can click OK, refresh the sources and select our source and we should be good. And then I can just activate a test license, click this test button down here and it seems to work. 
But just one more thing, as always, I recommend that we first test the connection using our query tool. To do that, I'm gonna go to tools, as for a query tool, and then connect it to the same host and port we are using in our link, select an example query, and send it. All right, so we have a connection from the connector to the database, which means the only thing missing now is the PLC, and we can fix that. First, I want to tell it where my connector is running. For that, I take the IP and port of my first link and give that information to my first instance. And because I'm using the example database, that's pretty much all I have to do. So the PLC should now be connected to the access database through the first link on our connector. So let's try this out. Convert it. And then upload it. And finally go online. Now, as soon as I set this variable here to true, the PLC should send this query to the database. And with this, it should select all the entries from table one, where the ID is below 10. So if we try the same thing in our query tool first, we can find out what data we should expect. It's pretty much the same thing as before. Let's change it anyway. So here's the data. And if we take a look at the first text here, it should appear here after we execute the program. Also, the down count should increase. So let's try that out. Just as expected, the down count increased and we received our sample text. Okay, so now if we go back to the config tool and change the port of the link, it shouldn't work anymore. Also, the error count should increase, which it does. Okay, so let me just reset it. And then we can also try the insert query, the update query, the delete query, and this one, not yet, because in this example, we are selecting data from two different links at the same time. And as you remember, we've only set up one yet. So let's create another one. And because we can connect it to another connector. Now the first link is connected to a connector on a virtual machine, whereas the second connector will be running on my host computer. Also, instead of an access database, we're going to use an SQL server. Because with SQL for automation, you can use pretty much any SQL database you want, as long as it supports ODBC. Okay, so let's open our config tool, connect it to our connector, and as you can see, I've already prepared two links. Now we have another IP, another port, and another data source. So with this link, I'm accessing an SQL server, where we have this database and this table, and we should expect this data. So let's try it out. Now, because I've already set up the program correctly in the first place, we can try it out right away. If I execute this double select, I should receive the data from the first link here and from the second link here, which is confusingly labeled as link one. But we can just change that, send it again, and updates right away. Okay, so that's basically all this example program shows. You can now, of course, also add even more instances or change the requests, but I'm gonna leave that for you. What we're going to do instead now in the rest of this video is take a quick tour through the library to make you understand a little bit better how it works. So let's start at the top here. Here we can define to what IPs our PLC should connect to. Next I've created some makeshift watch tables for each of the examples. Now you can of course also use the actual watch tables, but I think it's easier in the beginning if you only need one window. Next up are the instance calls. Now that's the part where the function block which handles the data communication gets called. In this case, two times. And with each of the calls, we're giving it some information like the connector IP, port, connection number, parameters. And most of these parameters you can just leave at default. But if you're using multiple instances, like in our case, you need to make sure that these three settings here aren't being used multiple times. Because if you have two instances with the same port on the same IP, for example, it won't work. But I guess that should be clear. So now let's take a look at the SQL for Cheeksworks function block. You can find it under the function blocks inside here and open it by clicking on the program body. Now, as I said before, this block is handling the data communication. It prepares the data you want to send to the connector and parses the data it receives. 
And to do that, it's using some functions and most importantly, another function block, which is this TCP active function block from Mitsubishi. But we're not gonna talk about that in this video. Just know that it's there. Now the SQL for GXOX function block contains a state machine. And in the state machine, we have an inactive state at the top where the block waits. And then as soon as it gets executed, it prepares the send data, checks the parameters, and goes through a few additional steps until it's eventually done or in another state. And in either of these cases, we can then reset it by resetting the execute signal. Now the function block for Mitsubishi can be found here. But again, I recommend to just leave it as it is. And then finally down here, we have some functions we've defined. There are functions to convert data types to strings and back, functions to add data to the send buffer and parse data from the receive buffer. And finally, a function which converts the IP we give it. Now you can open up each of these if you're interested and change them if you want, but they should work just like they are. So let's go back to the example program. Now the example program is, well, just as it says, an example program. So you can use it to try out the functionalities, but after that, I really recommend that you write your own program. Anyway, just like in the function block, I've set up a state machine, which goes through different steps depending on the request I want to send. If I execute a select query by setting the select variable to true, the state machine will go to step 10. There it will then first add a prefix to the send data, which contains some parameters like the max rows, max columns, etc. Then it will add this string, followed by this integer, and another string. And it's all there is. So after this data is added, the program will execute the SQL for GXWorks instance 1, go to step 11, and wait until the instance is finished. After it is finished, it will copy some of the data from the receive buffer to those variables here, increase a counter based on the result, and then finally go back to the reset step. So if you want to create some other request, you would have to change this part here to change the data that gets sent to the database, and this part to process the data you receive. And you should be able to do most of that using the functions we've provided, and you can look at the other requests to see a few more examples. So yeah, I guess that's about it for this video. Now if you have any more questions, feel free to write them in the comments below or check out our other videos for more information. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.